me safe and secure from from all else. just keep on leaning on Jesus we're leaning on, on Jesus and we are leaning, leaning on the everlasting and yes we about to say and we thank him for our food but God God is good amen he has blessed us tremendously blessed us as we journey along this thing we call life amen it is good to be here in the house of the Lord it's good to have uh, so many here before us amen amen if you are a visitor here you are our welcome and our honored guest it's good to have you good to see you amen it is good to see God is ever so gracious how he cares for us. It's good to see Brother Ron, Amen. Sister Devon, Amen. and family here in the house. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 It's been a long while. We know it's been a long journey, but we know God is able. Amen. And God sustains us. God heals us. Amen. And you being here is a testimony to God's grace and his mercy. Amen. So it's always good to see you. Always good to see you. This morning, I, I, won't, I won't hold you long. Lord, Nathaniel is on his way. Amen. Uh, the due date is next Monday, but it might happen today. Amen. Might happen this week. Amen. Got the car packed up. That's my son, y'all. Got my car packed up and forgot my tie. So it's serious this morning, amen. 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 And Dominique is just so blessed and so gracious. Look, just glowing, looking so lovely. Today is the day. Amen. Today, or oh, this week is the week. God has ordained it. Amen. We thank God for it. I'm sweating just thinking about it. It could just be hot in here. But God is good. God is good. God is good. We're thankful for all the attendance of just so many who were here yesterday uh, for our men and women's Bible study. We had a good time yesterday. Amen. 
Amen. And encourage you to be with us each second Saturday as we uh, separate and get to our individual classes. Amen. Uh, just uh, as a reminder, um, there are some flyers in the back. I'll actually get to it at uh, the announcements, uh, but there will be VBS. We're going to join with them this year uh, at the Collingswood Church of Christ, and that'll be next Sunday, July 17th through the 20th is when that will take place. Amen. I just want to make everybody aware. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Forgot to turn it back on. Uh, just to uh, uh, make everybody aware, uh, August 7th, we will hold a congregational meeting, and that's for the current members here only. Amen? We got some business we got to look at. We got some business we got to talk about. Amen, amen, amen. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Amen. Thankful to the brothers who've come before us, leading us in our worship service, leading us in worshiping the Lord. Mervyn, you picked the right song, considering the psalm that we done pointed out. Now I ask you, hold a bookmark where the scripture reading is. Hold a bookmark where the scripture reading is. And if you'll journey with me. And just mark Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 22. Ephesians chapter 2. Just hold on there. And then we'll make our way. We'll end at Ephesians chapter 2. But we're going to start this morning in Psalm 46. Amen, amen, amen. Psalm 46, after you've marked Ephesians chapter 2, if you would meet me back at Psalm 46, and we'll examine the first three verses this morning. Amen. Amen. Psalm 46 verses 1 through 3. Rereading for emphasis sake. The Bible says. God is. Our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore. We will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roam, roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Salah. This week, I had another sermon prepared to share with you, continuing our ongoing series. Uh, that we've been examining in the scripture to understand what it means to raise the bar in our lives spiritually. In our lives spiritually to be the best that we possibly can be for Christ. Well today we will slightly deviate or move away from our sermon series to deal with some recent events that have been frustrating and challenging. Amen. Well church, in recent years yeah, follow along with me. In recent years, we have seen many issues that have grossly affected what is known as urban communities or affected people of color. Episodes of police brutality being marginalized by other groups, black on black crime, police murdering young black men and women, and facing the ugly truth that racism in America is more vibrant than we thought. For what might be roughly the last four decades or more, black Americans have been facing racial issues that have, to a certain extent, been denied. And here it is in today's society, we have camera and video phones, but instead of evidence being validated, we are vilified as being against the police and being reverse racist. The problem is that we are only treating symptoms and claiming that we are fixing the problem. Why I say that? You see, it's easier to take a pill to treat diabetes than it is to change your diet or walk for 30 minutes every day. Amen? It's easier to simply say that someone is resisting arrest and not following instructions or has a criminal record than to treat people with dignity and recognize that a situation is not as aggressive as initially thought. The symptom, however, is everything that I just stated to you. The symptom is racism. It is police brutality. It is believing that people of color aren't telling the truth about police. 
and even blaming the white man for all the systemic issues that plague us and any type of ism that divides us. Everything I just said is a symptom. The real problem is sin. Amen? If you'll lend me your heart and ears to this thought. A present help in these troubling times. A present help in these troubling times. On Tuesday, July 5th, last week, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Alton Sterling was selling CDs out of the trip outside of the Triple S Food Mart convenience store owned by Abdullah Muflahi, who permitted Sterling to sell his CDs. It is reported that a homeless man approached Sterling begging him for money. The homeless man continued to badger Sterling for money, and Sterling showed the homeless man that he had a firearm or a gun. The homeless man walked away and then called the police saying that Sterling was pointing his gun at people in front of the convenience store. Two officers show up and confront Sterling aggressively, tackling, to, tackling him to the ground as two different cell phone videos have shown. And at point blank range, Sterling was shot multiple times in his chest and killed. His gun buried in his pocket and his arms suspended slightly above his, his chest. On Wednesday, July 6, 2016, in Falcon Heights, Minnesota, Philando Castile was driving with his girlfriend and their four-year-old daughter in the back seat. He was pulled over for having a broken tail light. The officer requested his documents. Castile informed the officer, as by law he has to, that he had a firearm and he had a license to carry it. Castile went to get and present his information to the officer. The officer then requested that Castile not move, and while Castile was raising his hands back up, he was shot four times. His girlfriend immediately began streaming the rest of the incident on Facebook Live, showing Castile dying, her daughter crying, and her being treated as a criminal. On Thursday, July 7th, in Dallas, Texas, while a peaceful Black Lives Matter protest was going on, a sniper began to shoot towards a group of police officers. There were five police officers killed. Six other officers were injured and one civilian was wounded. As it turns out, the police department that three of those officers came from, three of the officers that were killed, work with the Mountain View Church of Christ across the street from the department. And they're in mourning this morning. All of these events took place within three days. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All of these acts that seem to be provoked by racism. Church, this morning I want to do two things. First, I seek to encourage you to have hope in spite of these situations that have taken place. With that, I seek to relieve your frustration and anger if you have any. With that, I seek to relieve any worry that you may have about your safety and your family's safety. Second, I seek to share with you that there is a solution given from Scripture. It will be tough for some to digest. But when we understand it, it will change how we look at people in general. To share with you just briefly, in the city, in our city here of Camden, there are certain safeguards in place. I just got to report this now. There are certain safeguards in place that have allowed the community relations with the police department to thrive. I've been invited to and have seen many of the police officers in the community reflect the diversity that is within Camden. There is a heavy focus from Mayor Dana Red's office on building a strong relationship between the community and the Camden County Police Department. Community policing is one way that solutions like this can be avoided, but there's a better way, as we'll see in the scripture. I'm even happy to say that in Philadelphia there is the same mentality among the police force there. The diversity of the police force reflects the diversity of the community. Because of the diversity of each police department, it helps the community feel safer simply because the police department looks like them and understands them. I just gave you a hint. I just gave you a hint and I'm going to leave it right there and then I'm going to come back to it. If you have your Bibles and you're examining Psalm 46. Again, the Bible says, God is our strength. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. 
Therefore we will not fear though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. As a child of God, one who has been obedient to the gospel, there are certain things that we have that those who haven't obeyed the gospel do not have. We have the Lord, amen? We have what he provides, safety, peace, strength, and health. But there is something to grasp that this psalm, this scripture is dealing with and showing us today. Verse 1 is the foundation of the psalm. The premise of the rest of verses 2 and 3 are only built when you understand verse number 1. Verse, the first, uh, yeah, verse number 1, the first part of it, to break it in half, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Now, refuge is defined as a place of shelter, a place of protection, or a place of safety. Strength is defined as body or muscular power. It's real easy to say this. God is our refuge and our strength. It's real easy to say it. But if you don't understand it, it falls flat. Let me give you an example. I can say I'm Dominique's refuge and strength. And so what you understand is I won't let nothing happen to Dominique. However, my strength and my refuge giving ability is based on what I possess. I weigh 250. I'm five foot eight. So if a brother is six feet tall, he might be, Dominique might be in danger. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I mean, I'm strong, but you know what I'm saying. But, 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 but y'all get what I'm saying. So if it's based on me, then refuge and strength are limited. But in order to understand the scripture, you have to know who God is. Amen? God created the world. Y'all missed it. God created the world. The, uh, God cre Listen, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We understand Genesis 1 and 1. And then we understand, he said, let there be light, and there was. It was, he said, light, and it appeared. It was, he said, let this whole thing that's out of order, get in order. He just said, get in order, and it got in order. He said, let the water and the firmament of the water be separate from the dry land. And it was. He said, let trees grow and let the seed of the fruit be inside the do you understand he just spoke yes. and everything happened Amen. he spoke and it was does that make sense Amen. God spoke and said in Genesis 1 and 26 let us make man in our own image and he made man from the dust of the earth took what he created and pulled him and made him into a living being breathed life into him and made him into a living being you see God created a world that was perfect and at the time had a man and a woman, when we get to Genesis 2, that were perfect. Genesis 1 is a summary. Genesis 2 breaks down how he made man in detail. Well, everything God created was perfect. And then comes Genesis chapter 3. Man sinned. Man sinned and God said, well, I've made everything perfect. Now, I need to make a way for man. Well, y'all got to dig deep with me. Genesis 3 and 15 is what I'm getting at, where he says to the serpent, you will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. You see, God, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, he says, let's make man. In Genesis 28, he says, to man, be fruitful and multiply. Grasp it. He put it on the man. Everything in this world is perfect. So he says to the man, be fruitful and multiply. He says to the man, be fruitful and multiply. So it was all on the man. But now man has sinned. But instead of putting it on man, God in his graciousness puts it on himself. Do you follow what I'm saying? When you get from Genesis 3, you get all the way to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 1 and 28, he says to man, be fruitful and multiply. But because he understands man can't help himself, he says, I need to help man. So what he says to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, is he said, I will multiply you and I will make your seed fruitful. Do you understand what happened? He put it on man in Genesis 1. He put it back on himself in Genesis 12. In Genesis 12, y'all follow what I'm saying? That's a gracious God. You look at 
the, the Israelites and they're in Egypt. Well, they get out of Egypt normally, if you know anything about history. In Haiti, the French occupied the country. And so they enslaved people in Haiti. Well, hey, well, France, as history would say, is France abolished slavery in the Caribbean, but that's not really the case. What happened was a few years earlier, there was a Haitian revolt where they killed off everybody that was French. And then the French said, oh yeah, uh, uh, slavery is illegal. In Jamaica, it was the same thing. Britain said, oh no, 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 slavery is illegal, but right before that, there was a revolt where they killed as many British people as they could. Why do I say these things? It is typically understood if you want to get free, you got to commit some act of violence. There's only one time in the world, one time in history, the people never had to fight, never had to lift up a hammer, never had to lift up a sword. Amen. But they got free, Amen. even though harm was done to another group of people. Amen. I'm talking about when God freed the Israelites Amen. from Egypt. Amen. The Israelites never lifted up their hand. It was God's hand over Israel and against Egypt. Amen. Do you understand the God that we serve? Amen. That he's a God of grace and mercy. That he's a God that would protect them. When they got sick in the wilderness from the fiery serpents, there was a bronze serpent that God said, Moses, make this thing. And when anybody looked at the serpent, God made sure that if they looked, they could be healed. God, when you understand who God is, there's no doubt to his refuge and his strength. Does that make sense? But you have to understand who God is. Is When you understand who he is, that he's all powerful, that he knows everything and that he's everywhere, you don't question your refuge and your strength. Amen? Amen. The second part of Psalm 46 and verse 1 says, A very present help in trouble. In this instance, the language behind the word very means muchness or abundance or force I said before that I'm a big man using myself as an example if I was to protect brother oh you're looking dead at me so I'm gonna pick on you if brother if somebody came in here and had a firearm and aimed at brother oh and I jumped in front I could take that bullet why because I'm present at the time I could take that bullet. I'm a big man so I could take a bullet it might not do anything now mind you if he has more than one bullet, after a certain amount of time of me being hit, I'm going to fall out of the way. If he had a bulletproof vest on, do y'all follow what I'm saying? If he had a bulletproof vest on, you could shoot once, but hit a vest too many times. The bulletproof vest is of no use. So God being our very present, get the language, our very, our abundantly present, current, tense word present help means just because he helped you yesterday doesn't mean he can't help you today just because he helps you in this moment of time when things are tough doesn't mean he won't help you in the next moment of time do you understand what I'm saying when we depend on God we recognize that he is our refuge and our strength all that he entails he's an ever present God he's continually around us continually protecting us and he is our refuge amen uh, yeah, that, that makes sense, right? Hmm. He's always and abundantly providing help for his people, regardless of if they ask him or not. Now, I got I to gotta dig deep for a moment. My hope is that through this sermon, we can all find hope and trust in the Lord. You see... Verses 3 and 4 are built on verse number 1. So when we understand who God is, what he has and what he possesses and what he has for us, there's no doubt in our minds he's our refuge and our strength, very present help in trouble. Because of that, the word therefore is there. Because of that, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip it into the heart of the sea though the waters roar and foam though the mountains quake at its swelling pride you know while the scripture is speaking and while David as he writes this or, 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 or yeah while David or, or the sons of, of Korah while they write this the one thought hyperbolically he's saying is a literal shifting of the earth 
a literal change of the earth. But you know, this covers another area. There's a change in society today. Amen? Life is not valuable anymore. There are individuals that will, at a moment's notice, over something silly, take your life in a moment. Why? Because they do not respect life. But God is our refuge and our strength in spite of what they say and what they do. In spite of the way that they think. When individuals go ahead and say, well, God's way ain't the way. Those who are in Christ, those who've been obedient to the gospel, those individuals can still say, God is my refuge. God is my strength. God is my ever-present help. Why? No matter what happens in our society. We got strength in Christ. We got strength in God. Why do I go there? There is this sentiment about black on black crime. Now, when I speak scripture, that's fact. Y'all got to accept that. That's scripture. This is opinion. Black on black crime is a distractor and almost a mythological beast. Because 80% of people in an area will commit 80% of the crimes on those people. So black people living amongst black people will commit those crimes. White people living amongst white people, Asian people living amongst Asian people, Latinos living amongst Latin people will commit those crimes. So black on black crime needs to be spoken about, but so does crime in general. Because there are groups. <laughs> I went a little bit farther now. But there are groups that are in trouble. You know that the number four or number five death among of the top ten deaths among black Americans, number five is homicide, 4.6%. Did you know that the number two cause of death among whites is suicide? Sin is ever about us. And if we pick fights in the smallest ways, and just in this area, not in this area, not in this area, before we, we got to recognize that God blesses us all we got to recognize God provides the solution. we got to recognize that if God ain't in your school, you need to get your child to a school that got God in it. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Why? Because if we distance ourselves from the Lord, we will distance ourselves from the solution. With that, put a marker right there. Go over to Ephesians chapter 2. And the reason I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2 is because we, we got to understand what the solution. All of this mess that happened this past week has been blatant racism. The they, 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 they officers who are fearful for no reason, killing individuals for no reason other than the fear that's within them. Everybody or the individual, the sniper that chose to shoot those officers angry simply because of what happened over here. It makes no sense. It's senseless violence. Amen? Well, let's dig deep. And if he, before I get to Ephesians, let me share with you. Uh, God's plan, God's plan to solve the sins of isms is based in him reconciling man to himself. Amen? In Colossians 1, 19 and 20, if you're taking note, the Bible says, For it was the Father's good pleasure for the, all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself having made peace through the blood of his cross through him I say whether things on earth or things in heaven we see that God planned to reconcile everything to himself this is the gospel really is a plan of reconciliation but it's not just the plan of reconciliation of man to God but it's a plan of reconciliation of man to man. Y'all in Ephesians chapter 2? Y'all read with me for context sake. We're going to begin at verse number 14 and we'll read all the way down. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 beginning in verse number 14. For he himself, he, this is Christ now, is our peace. Who made both groups into one. That's a, that's, a, that's a red flag. i got to point something out. You see, we have in the church many times gone to Ephesians 4, and we've, we've taken Ephesians 4, where it says there is one law, one faith, 
One baptism. And we've pointed to that and said this is, this is sternly against sectarianism or denominationalism. Well, you got to realize there was no denominational church when, Ephesians, when the book of Ephesians or the letter of Ephesians was written. He's talking to Christians. At the time, the biggest issue was that Jewish Christians wouldn't associate with Gentile Christians. It was a race war. Y'all with me? So these individuals thought that they were more holy than these individuals over here. And so what they said was, listen, you got to obey the gospel. But in addition to that, you got to get circumcised. You got to follow the law. You got to follow all 600 statutes. You got to follow the Ten Commandments. You gotta, they put on them more than they could bear. This is why in chapter 2, verse number 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, not through works. That's works of the law. Because the Jews couldn't fulfill the works of the law, so Christ had to come. Faith that he accomplished something. But faith, obedient faith to him leads to salvation. So he says to them, Paul, listen, you've got to recognize. It's two of you. Two separate groups, but you've got to recognize what Jesus did. He brought both groups together. Y'all understand that? Let's dig into the text further. Verse number 14 again, it says, continuing on, the Bible says, For he himself is our peace who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. And by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so that in himself he might make the two into one new man thus establishing peace and might reconcile them both into one body to God through the cross by having put to death the enmity and he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to you who were nearby for through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into one dwelling of God in spirit. Now, I read all of that in context so that you understood. But the verse I want you to focus on is verse number 15. In verse number 15, again, the Bible says, by abolishing in his flesh the enmity or the division, which is the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. If you have a pen, I want you to underline in verse number 15 the phrase noted, in himself he make the two into one new man. Y'all see that? In himself he might make the two into one new man. Thus, establishing peace. Why does that phrase need to be underlined? Part of the phrase that says, into one new man. This phrase is powerful. And this is why. The word new means fresh. Right? We all want fresh greens. We don't want anywhere. But new means fresh. But the word man... It's actually from the Greek word that sits behind it in the manuscript, anthropos. And it means human race. Do you understand that? In other words, obeying the gospel didn't just put us into the body of Christ, but it put us into a new race called Christian. Do you understand what I just said? You see, this is why Paul states in Galatians 3, 27 and 28, dealing with a similar issue. He states, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
so how does this affect us today? If getting into Christ puts us into a new race, how come we're not helping more people get into this new race? Uh, Y'all follow what I'm saying? Are we sharing the gospel? Are we sharing a testimony of how God has blessed us to help people reach the Lord? A few years ago, I went to D.C. to uh, preach at the 13th Street Church of Christ. I did a series for a whole month of, the whole month of September. I did a series. And I'm, it's D.C. District of Columbia. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I was expecting to see at least somebody from Barry Obama office. I was expecting to see somebody who dealt with the local politics in D.C. I was expecting to see somebody that was a senator, somebody that was a congressman, somebody that was a representative. I ain't see you. The question that I have is, is the gospel only for common folk? Is it? And we need to be reaching the people inside the office with the gospel. Amen? You know what? The one statement I made earlier, and I said I was going to come back to it, is, you know, if, if, if the community is made up of various races, each race needs to be represented in the police force. Each race needs to be represented in politics. Why? Because people fear people feel like they're being represented and respected. Well, my question is, shouldn't the Christian race be represented as well? Amen. It makes sense then the gospel is for everybody, then, then maybe in order to get individuals who don't see things the way we do, maybe we need to reach them with the gospel that's for every man. And show them what this new race is all about. That this race is not a race about division. It is a race of love. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It is a race when individuals recognize who you are. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. There's a story. You know what I'm talking about, Maurice. There's a story of a brother named Michael Shank. Michael, Michael Shank got baptized in 1987 or 88. A day before my birthday. March 14th. So he got baptized into Christ. But the time he went to go get baptized into Christ, he's like, we're driving through a dark neighborhood in Nashville. This is the neighborhood you go get drugs at. So everybody looking at us and we're like, so we still driving and an officer pull us over. Officer, big dude, because them cops don't play out there. Big dude walk up, uh, excuse me sir, what you doing around here? And he said, you ain't going to believe this if I say it to you. He said, man, I done heard it all. He says to him, well, I'm looking to obey the gospel tonight and get baptized into Christ. The gentleman looked at him and said, wait a minute, where are you going? He said, I'm going to such and such church of Christ. He said, that's my congregation, let's go. And he turned on the lights and he followed him. <laughs> what if, what if, what if, what if, for argument's sake, what if, what if, what if, what if the church was relevant? What if the church was relevant? Lord have mercy, I'm so sick of the church not being relevant. So many things going on in society, and we say, well, no, Christians need to, why don't you stand up? Amen. Well, I'm just saying. Amen. If we, look, Amen. I'm going to be on a, on a radio program tomorrow uh, talking about these issues and how the church can get involved. I was on a conference call yesterday with the Black Congressional uh, uh, Caucus, and they weren't talking about nothing. And the statement that kept being repeated was, the church has to do something. Show enough, the church got to do something. The only way to change anything, but, 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 but catch this, catch this. Let me say this before I move forward. The only way to change anything, we represent Christ, right? The only way to change anything is to keep Christ in everything that we do. Which means if we're here marching to get guns off the street, then we're going to be marching and saying, Christ does not want this violence to exist. Because that, that violence will do nothing but tear a community apart while Christ unites. Amen? Amen? It's time for us to get relevant in this community and in others. Why? Because the world needs Christ. Amen. That's why he came. Amen. 
so that all might all that's what the scripture says all might be reconciled unto him when you recognize that he reconciles you to him when you understand what he does you'll jump in that water to get into Christ you understand what I'm saying when you understand what Christ does for Lord have mercy it is just a magnificent blessing you can't hold it it's something it'll make you shake if you don't do something about it and he started shaking I'm playing bro I was <laughs> <laughs> but the mentality is church it's time for us to get the gospel out there because the one thing I can say about the Mountain View Church of Christ they reach to the, the department not just to start a relationship with the police department but so that they could put the gospel in the police department because if the gospel is in the police department if the gospel catches some of those officers, those officers have a different mentality when they go out in the streets. Now, instead of looking at an individual as a perpetrator of a crime, now they start looking at the individual as a lost soul. Lord, I got to get him. I got to reach out to him with the gun. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got two officers in Philly that do it right now. Their mentality is, no, when I look out and when I see somebody, my thought is, you're in this terrible situation and it would be made so much better if you understood the love of Christ. We got to get the gospel out of this building. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. That's the only way to change our society. When we can understand who Christ is, that he unites all of us. Lord, I won't look at somebody that looks different than me, as though he's a threat to me. I won't look at him like something's wrong with him. I won't look at him as though he's trying to take something from me. I won't look at him like, like I got to get my family away from him. I'll look at him like he's a man like me that needs Christ, that needs the gospel. It changes my view how I look at him. And now my mind is focused on fulfilling the mission of Christ, which will unite us all. Amen? Amen. Amen. that's my message for this morning Amen. I share with you listen times are tough right now but we need Christians out in these streets amen? amen Amen. and as Christians we have the responsibility to go out and to share the gospel with others I'm going to ask you two questions real quick because I believe in making certain things practical amen well in our lives, there are two action steps I want to share with you. Two action steps I want to share with you. The first, you might not know how to study with somebody to share the gospel. Invite somebody to worship. Amen. Invite somebody to worship. But I want you to ask them a series of questions to give the invitation. First question is, are you looking for a church home? Why say that? Are you looking for a church home? If they say yes, if they say no. The second question is, are you learning and gaining an understanding of the word? The next question is, have you obeyed the gospel. Did you know that most don't know what that is? What the gospel is? Don't understand that when Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4, and I'll paraphrase and summarize, when he says very plainly, the gospel that I preached to you was this, that Jesus Christ came and died according to the scriptures, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel in one short form. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But if you say to people, have you obeyed the gospel? Because the Bible does say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, listen, he will take vengeance on those that obey not the gospel. That don't obey the gospel. So how do you obey an action? I'm so glad you asked. Obedience to the gospel is quite simple. Christ defines it himself. Paul defines it as well. Jesus said... He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's Mark 16 and verse 16. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said it in John chapter 3 and verse number 5. But unless you are born of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has said it several times. Well, Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 11. I'm going to paraphrase. He says... For those of you who've been baptized have been baptized into his death. To rise, to walk 
in the newness of life. So the gospel is that Jesus came, he died, and then he rose. And in doing all of that, he died for our sins and rose. And in doing all of that, he broke the hold that sin and death had on our lives. So just like him, he died and then he rose. Obedience, as Paul would put it in Romans 6, is to die and rise. To be buried with him in baptism. The pool is on today. If there's anybody in here who's not obeyed the gospel, today is the day. Amen? Amen? Because there's no time. Amen. There's no time that's given, that's promised. There are people this past week that have died from all ages. We know Alton Sterling was 37. We know that uh, 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 Philando Castillo, he, was, uh, he might have been about the same age. But there are others that have passed away and we don't even... And put an age out there and just, just search the deaths of people that died in the past week around that age. You'll find them of all races, of all, no matter what it is, time is not promised to us. Amen? Today is the day to obey the gospel. Amen? The second thing, the second action step I want to give you, first one was invite somebody here and ask them if they've obeyed the gospel. Ask them if they have a church home. Ask them if they understand everything that they're hearing. Don't go no further than that. Because too many individuals, I'm going to go on a rant, so I don't want to go on a rant. But too many individuals get so caught up in worship and praise that they miss, they have to understand and live a different life for Christ. Amen. Christ calls us to be holy and to live holy. You get in Christ, it's time to live holy. Well, I, and I'll leave it right there. I ain't got no time for a rant. But listen, the second thing I want to share with you is get active. Get active in your community. As people of God, we have a responsibility to get active. We shall not do. Everything that we do, Lord, if anybody should be in legislation, if anybody should be in politics to help the greater good, shouldn't it be the people that understand how valuable life is? That have no political agenda? We just got a Christ agenda. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It don't, listen, if all it is is being a, 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 an alderman or a bondman, whatever it is you must do in representing Christ, do it. Why? Because it's too many times that as Christians, we sometimes sit back and we say, man, they ought to change these laws, man. They ought to do this, this, and the other. They better do that. You know, we're going to pray for it, and that's all. You know, faith without works is dead. How can we, James 2, how can we say that we are of the faith and we don't do nothing about it? That don't make no sense. So sure enough, they're going to show, put me on, 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 on the radio tomorrow, and, and y'all might not have a preacher. I might say something that they put me in jail. I don't know, but listen. <laughs> and we, ain't got no, we ain't got no bail fund here, but listen. <laughs> we got something to do. Amen? We represent Christ, not just in everyday life, not just in how we live our life, but we represent him. We need to represent him in those areas that need representation. Stop just relying on the Republican Party. I just said it. They just said it. They claim Christianity, but there's a number of things they're doing that ain't Christian. It's Democrats that claim Christianity, but it's time for Christians to stand up. I don't care what your political affiliation is. But as a Christian, we stand for him first, not political party. Do you understand what I'm saying? As Christians, we represent the new race. Lord have mercy. If we want things to change, we got to change them. And we got to be active. Amen? So listen, I, I want to give you the opportunity. If you've not obeyed the gospel, why don't you come now? In a moment, we're going to stand. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. We're going to sing the, the hymn of invitation to give you opportunity to come before us to just confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then we will baptize you today. Amen? We got hair nets for women. We got hair nets for men. Because, you know, some brothers... Anyway, <laughs> he laughed because he ain't got... Let me <laughs> but today is the day, amen, to obey the gospel. Amen. But if you are in need of prayer, today is the day we pray together, amen? We go to God in prayer for all of these times. Regardless, we pray for the leaders. Lord, even if you don't like the leader, pray for him too, or her. Why? Because God needs to be impacted. God needs to be impactful in this world. Sure enough, we need him, and the world needs him. So right now, we're going to stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation and give you the opportunity.
to come put on Christ or to share your prayer request, and then we will pray together. Amen. Amen. Amen.